Howdy folks! After playing such a straightforward game like Gears of War, gotta play something with more of an emphasis on exploration. So I figure, why not play the very first Zelda game? Ah yes, Legend of Zelda. My very first foray into the mystical land of Hyrule. Believe it or not, Zelda was being developed at the same time as Super Mario Bros. Yeah, both Miyamoto and Tezuka were pretty much pulling double duty way back in 1984. Ideas of what would go in which game was bounced around by the two, but one major thing that Tezuka and Miyamoto agreed on was that Mario was going to be a linear title, while Zelda would be non-linear. Miyamoto came up with the concept of exploration via his childhood memories of exploring the countryside around Kyoto. Miyamoto also conceptualized the characters Link and Princess Zelda. Link was given his name so as the player would form a Link with the PC. Though, in saying that, I am of the opinion that Link does have a personality of his own. Zelda was named after the wife of one of Miyamoto's favorite authors, F. Scott Fitzgerald. The music for the game was composed by none other than longtime Nintendo veteran Koji Kondo. Like with Mario, Zelda's music was meant for the player's immersion. In fact, the main theme for the Zelda series was inspired from the 1928 orchestral piece Bolero from Maurice Ravel. Because the sheer scope of this game was bigger than anticipated, it took slightly longer for it to be finished. Zelda was released as a launch title for the Famicom Disk System in late February 1986. One year later, it would be released in North America for the NES, and it took gamers by storm. Hell, by 1988, Nintendo would sell its 2 millionth copy of The Legend of Zelda. It was a big deal, though I will say that was probably due in no small part to the very, very expensive ad campaign that Zelda had. They sure did. All I can say is, it worked. Well, let's pop this into the NES and see how well it holds up today. It's pretty cool how even today this title screen is still pretty iconic. Then again, most Zelda games have iconic title screens, in my opinion. Anyway, eventually it fades to dark, and it gives you the backstory to the adventure you're about to partake in. Just a heads up for you folks, the franchise has a chronological timeline, but that's actually worthy of a video all its own. Yeah, not gonna touch on that. But I will give y'all the narrative for this particular Zelda title. An evil sorcerer named Ganon has the Triforce of Power, one of three mystical treasures bestowed upon mortals by the gods. The other two being the Triforce of Wisdom and the Triforce of Courage. By the way, the Triforce of Courage isn't really touched upon in this game, but it is there. Anyway, Ganon leads an army of monsters into the Kingdom of Hyrule and starts searching for the Triforce of Wisdom. Princess Zelda, the holder of the Wisdom Triforce, is eventually captured by Ganon's forces. However, before she's spirited away to Ganon's lair, she breaks the Triforce into eight shards and instructs her nursemaid Impa to hide them in secret dungeons scattered around the kingdom. Zelda also instructs Impa to find someone courageous enough to save Hyrule. Whilst on her journey, Impa is besieged by Ganon's forces and is almost killed, but fortunately, she's saved by a young boy named Link. After being rescued, Impa tells Link of both Hyrule and Zelda's plight. Link then resolves to find the Triforce Shards and defeat Ganon. After a long, treacherous journey, Link finds the last of the eight shards, enters Ganon's lair, defeats him, gains the Triforce of Power, and peace is restored to Hyrule. The story in the first Zelda game is your typical sword and sorcery fair, but it births something far from typical. The plots for subsequent Zelda titles have evolved and changed so much that the franchise has become a full-bore epic. 
In saying that, the game, as well as the series in general, kind of reminds me of both Lord of the Rings and Dungeons and Dragons. In fact, I'm tempted to believe that Miyamoto and Tezuka have either read one of the Lord of the Rings books or are old school D&D players. I suppose it all has to do with the dungeons that you go through in this game. In all, there are nine, eight that have Triforce shards and one where Ganon is holding Zelda captive. The dungeons start off fairly easy, but they gradually get tougher. You'll be dealing with locked doors that require keys to open, rooms filled with enemies that must be dispatched before moving forward, rooms that are completely dark and need to be lit up, finding special items, avoiding traps, and of course, bosses. In short, there's dungeon crawling in this game, and it's something that fortunately stuck with the franchise. The gameplay for this title is solid. In fact, it's so solid that Nintendo still uses its formula in one way or another to this day. Visually, everything is presented in a top-down perspective. This is a good thing because it helps you see where all the enemies are, and thus you can plan out a strategy better or, in most cases, avoid getting hit. Link is given a wide array of different items. Most of them, such as the bomb, the raft, and the stepladder, are required for you to get further in the game. Link's most important item in this and any other Zelda game is his sword. Now, the sword that you start off with is quite weak, as it would be, because it's made out of wood. Once you have enough hearts, that is, health, you can trade in the wooden sword for the white sword. The white sword is more powerful, and it hits harder. Best of all, you can obtain this weapon before you even enter the first dungeon. In fact, I suggest you do that because some of the enemies, like the Dark Nuts, take quite a few hits to kill, and you'll want that extra bit of power to help you clear a screen of enemies. The most powerful sword that Link can wield is the Mighty Magical Sword. This weapon is awesome, and it's capable of killing most bosses in one to three hits. However, there is a catch. Like the White Sword, the Magical Sword requires you to have a certain number of hearts before you can use it. But unlike the White Sword, where you only need 5 hearts, the Magical Sword requires you to have 12. In other words, you're not going to be able to use this weapon until you're in the last third of the game. But hey, once you do get to use it, it's all the more sweeter. Probably the most biggest and iconic aspect of The Legend of Zelda's gameplay is the exploration. The game encourages you to pretty much just go out and explore. This is the thing that has stayed true for the franchise for nearly every game. Hyrule is a big world, and there's a lot of ground to cover even in this first title. Exploring also helps you to become familiar with the environment. The more you play, the more you'll remember where everything is at and how to acquire it. Also, you tend to get a slight sense of adventure whilst playing this game. Now to be honest, this is more true with the later titles, but still, going into dungeons and fighting bad guys is exhilarating, if only so slightly. Legend of Zelda may not have been the first open-world action-adventure game, but it was the first to actually bring the masses' attention to that particular genre. any NES game, Legend of Zelda is pretty challenging. Well, it's not super challenging, but I ask, what NES game is easy? As much as I like this title, Legend of Zelda is kind of a where-the-hell-do-I-go sort of game. You are given hints by some NPCs, but let me tell you, the hints are, for the most part, cryptic. You're given vague info on where to go and what to do, so don't feel ashamed if you feel the need to use a guide. Though, in that sense, the ambiguous hints kind of adds a bit of to the exploration aspect of this title. I guess you could chalk that all up to where the challenge of The Legend of Zelda really lies. There are also the enemies in this game, which I think are really cool. 
Most of them, such as the Moblins, the Tektites, and the Octoroks, have become mainstay baddies for the franchise. The only enemy that I don't like in this game are the Dark Nuts. You can't hit this enemy from the front, only from the side or from the back. Thing is, like most bad guys that you face, the Dark Nuts tend to move around, and in their case, they move in a very sporadic pattern, meaning that you're probably going to get hit by these guys eventually. In short, the Dark Nuts are tough and dickish, so be aware of that if this is your first time playing. Other enemies that I'd like to mention are the bosses. If you count Ganon, there are seven boss characters to fight against. Kinda low, considering how many dungeons Link has to explore, but a lot of them are pretty memorable. My favorites are Gliok, Dodongo, and Goma. Okay, I've gone over the story and dungeons, the gameplay and its aspects. I even touched a little upon the challenge and the enemies. So what else is there to say about the first Zelda title? Not much else, actually. Well, there is the second quest that's given to you at the end of the game, but I'll be frank, it's ultimately useless. The second quest is just a harder version of the original game, which... If you're looking for more of a challenge, it's great, but for me personally, it doesn't do much. There's no new weapons or items. Hell, the ending at the end is the same as what you would get from the first quest. But other than that, and a couple other things, the game itself is quite well done. It's got good music, good graphics, solid gameplay, and interesting characters. Even though Link, Zelda, and Ganon were given very minimalistic character development for this game, they later got more and better character development in subsequent Zelda titles. Hell, Ganon is listed in my top 10 favorite video game villains of all time, and Link and Zelda are in my top 10 favorite video game couples. I know that this review was a little short, but you gotta remember that this was the very first game in the franchise, so it's bare bones. But at the end of the day, it's a good title, and if you have an NES, you should totally track down a copy. And with that, I give The Legend of Zelda a G for good. It's a classic NES game, and it was a humble start for the series. Before we end this episode, though, Shasta would like to give his final thoughts. As many of you folks know, the series would go on to make more and greater titles. But that's another story. Alrighty folks, I hope to see y'all around the next time Shasta and I review a video game. And as always, y'all come back now, alright? <laughs>